Jack, it's great to Thank have you. you here. Thank you, Dan. Richest it's my honor. person in China, biggest IPO in world history. You made more money in Alibaba in the last 90 days. You probably don't even know this. More money in Alibaba the last 90 days than Amazon has made in the last 20 years. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's, that's sure. actually true. Um, so no pressure here, uh, but it's wonderful to have you here. It's, it's, it's truly an exciting moment for us, an exciting moment to spend time with you. To Jerry's question, I, I, I'm gonna ask a very simple one. We know about the soccer team, we know about the e-commerce platforms, we know about the set-top boxes, the logistics companies, the uh, operating systems on mobile phones. So I'm gonna put it to you simply. What is Alibaba? Alibaba is an ecosystem that helping small business to grow. But I would like to say about the soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, you know, the, the owner of the soccer team really make me drunken that night. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, Jack, you know, he's been poisoning me for one year. <laughs> he said, Jack, please enter the soccer, soccer business, but I know nothing about the soccer. But I just to see China soccer team, China soccer team, too bad. Uh -huh. It's so difficult to make it even worse. <laughs> so make it a better is a better. But I think the thing I like is that the soccer is supposed to make 11 people play like a one person. But in China, when you see 11 people, they play like 110 people. <laughs> and China is a one child family. We have to make our kids play like a team. So if I think China is pretty good at play, play the single, you know, you know, ping pong and tennis. They are pretty good, but soccer is too team bad. Sports, no. Team sports. But on the other hand, you know, ecosystem is all about the team sports. Mm -hmm. So, Alibaba is an ecosystem helping small business. So all those things fit into it, you think? Yeah. Uh, film studios, they yeah. have a role. Because we what, have what, are, what is that role? The film studio, uh, to me, I think you know. I don't worry about uh, today, Alibaba business. I don't worry about next three years. Because whatever we have done today, we, we've been working for 15 years for today and next three years. But what I worry about is 10 years later, what we, we should do. Company like us, it's so difficult to catch one or two opportunities to make our business sustain. So company like us, we have to solve social problems. Only by solve the social problems we can last long. That's a pretty big mission to, so, to, to well, solve social problems. Well, you know, problems. small companies catch one or two opportunities, but company like our size, you have to think about the, the future. Right. So I think in 10 years, China have two problems which we can help. One is health problem. The other is mental health problem. Hmm. Health because the you know the air, the water, the pollution today. 10 years, China will have a lot of problems, have a physical condition problems. Cancers and stomach problems, lung problems will come. So if we start to do it now, then we can help. Okay, so, so right now you're changing uh, commercial behavior. Yeah. People are doing business in ways they never did before. No. Can you tell us about uh, maybe one or two, maybe even three things that's changing in the Chinese consumer that didn't even happen even just a few years ago? How is that consumer doing things differently? Well. Chinese people, young people, they really don't uh, go shopping a lot on the real uh, department store. All the department stores guy hate me. <laughs> you know, I think they, they find excuse. My business is bad because of Jack, you know? <laughs> but I think it's the life. Today, what we are building is a lifestyle. We change the behavior, not like Amazon. You go there, you buy what you want. But Alibaba, Taobao, when you go there, you buy something different. You buy, you see, this is the picture. You buy something different. It's People feel excited. Wow, there's something different. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, in the States, it will be bad if you buy something that's different from the pictures you saw. But in the States, young people say, I love it because it's different. Serendipity. Yeah. Serendipity. Let's talk about the United States. No, Sorry, no, no, no. Well, let me finish about okay. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the other problem I worry about is the, uh, the young people. I think China's getting rich so quickly. I worry, we worry about people have a deep pocket but share of mind. So movie is the best way to change Chinese young people's behavior and thinking and valuing and measuring the heroes. Is there a system. mental health crisis brewing in China? It is. I, it will come if we don't if we don't start to work now. And, and, and movies are important to helping educate the. It is. It youth. is. And uh, especially we have uh, more than 100 million people shopping our site every day. Most people, young people. So we are actually the largest 
entertainment company in the world. Every night we have 18 million people waddling on our side without buying anything. <laughs> So that, this That's is like so, so how we can feed them with a good quality of products. So are you saying that commerce and the need to obtain things and the need to shop is a sign of potential coming mental illness for the people of China? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, people in China in the future that people will, will not go to the supermarket, will not have a lot of uh, offline. But people go in there just using Apple phone and pick the picture and get and order there appears, online. There yeah. appears. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're here in Hollywood. Yeah. You're going to spend some time at movie studios uh, yeah. tomorrow. So tell me about uh, what Alibaba can do, perhaps make some new types of movies. Like what, what, is the, what does the Jack Ma picture look like? Um, I uh, told my people a few, you know, few months ago about a Chinese movie and American movie. American movie, all the heroes May sense at the beginning of the movie they're not good guys it looks like <laughs> and at the top time comes they are great heroes and all the heroes are alive but in China all the movies heroes must have died hmm. <laughs> and, you and, think and and you know if the heroes die nobody want to be the heroes <laughs> I, I have never seen a movie in China <laughs> that a, a hero survived does this does this reflect perhaps some real uh, differences in U.S. society versus Chinese society? A fatalistic society perhaps in China I think and a more optimistic one in the U.S.? I think all the society should be optimistic. All the society should make the hero survive. Right. And China is making a lot of the heroes survive, but they just uh, don't make the movie. On the movie, all the heroes are dead. Right. So what's wrong with China that there are no heroes in the movies? I don't know. So that's why I want to find out you know, how they, how they do it. And you're going to find the answers in Hollywood? <laughs> Well, at least I see a lot of Hollywood <laughs> movies have heroes. Right, right. Yeah, okay. And I uh, come here to learn. I come here that I think, you know, how we can make uh, most of the uh, Americans understand that China, because when I first, w when I go to IPO, I receive so many uh, questions from SEC. And it seems that they know very little about not Alibaba, but China. Hmm. So I think it's, it's my job to make people here understand China better and making the Chinese people understand American better. Okay, let's do that. Let's talk about, uh, let's take a show of hands here. How many people know 11main.com? How many people know that website? Can anyone raise their hand? One, two, three people know 11main.com. Why don't you tell the American audience what 11main.com is and what it means for the future of Alibaba? Well, honestly, I don't know there either. <laughs> It's true, because I was so busy last week, last year, because I think the team, we, we, we invest a lot in the States. We're going to invest more. And very important is that people say, hey, Alibaba is so big. Why you don't come to ch the USA? When are you come to invade the USA? Right? And as I come to USA, I want to thank USA, because I got my inspirations from Silicon Valley. 15 years ago, I, my, my trip to the USA and I see the Silicon Valley, see the, the lights everywhere, the Sunday, all the car parks, so, you know, packed with cars and people working hard. And I know the internet. So I go back to China, had a China dreams, built up Alibaba. So today, it's, my, it's our time to come here, invest in the Silicon Valley, helping entrepreneurs, making sure it's true. So we invested May 11 and this and that and China, making sure they're right. good in the States. So 11 maincom is a website where you can, via Alibaba, shop in shop. America. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is a really interesting proposition. Mm -hmm. And I think you're bringing this to places like uh, uh, Brazil in particular and Russia. And that is the notion of bringing uh, commerce directly from China to uh, consumers in other countries. Basically, if you think about it, cutting out Walmart entirely from the process of getting cheaper Chinese goods to uh, other nations. Sounds pretty interesting and maybe a little bit scary. No, I think I'm more interested in bringing America to China, bring Brazil to China, bring the, uh, Russia to China, because um, selling Chinese products around the world, that's, n that's the past 10, 15 years, everybody's doing that. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is how can we sell more American small business products to China, helping more European products to China. This is what I feel excited about. This is the unique value that we have, because we have such huge demanding of good products from outside. So, so past 10 years exporting 
China export to outside. But next 10 years, I believe China should import. So what would be two or three examples from U.S. small businesses that would make sense in the Chinese market? Well, last year we helped uh, the Washington State, the cherries. You know, we sold 150 tons of cherries to China. And we sell the Alaska seafood to China. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, 15 days, we, we, we partnered with the Costco. We sold 80 tons of nuts to China. So I think, uh, I think there are so many farm products here that can be sold to China because China today, because of the pollutions, people cannot have good quality products, and which, which we want. We, right. we so think it's mainly agricultural products. Mainly big for California. We start big with agricultural state. products. Right. Yeah. And are there other things that you think U.S. businesses should start? Maybe some people here today can catch oh. your ear and oh, make yeah. some deals. Oh yeah. You know, um, when I, I think it's it's. It's amazing. It's, I, people here probably don't 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 realize that China, when you have uh, 120, 110 to 120 million people shopping on your site every day, you mm. almost you can almost sell everything. Sell anything. <laughs> and I, I don't. I, m my family to buy everything. I don't shop online, but my wife buys everything at home. So you've got a lot of nuts and cherries yeah. in the uh, in the home, right? Yeah, we bought a lot. Few, few we, tons. We we we, we buy the you know, sea crabs and the fresh crabs, all kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. So let's turn to I think what is your most radical, the most radical thing you've done in China is not selling, connecting buyers and sellers. It's in the financial services industry, your uh, money market Alipay. fund, your mutual fund, you have out. Uh, I think it got a hundred billion dollars in what under a year, mm -hmm. hundred billion dollars deposits. This to me is the most radical thing because you changed the, uh, and this, we're talking about interest rates, I'm sorry, but we're going to talk about interest rates. You changed people's expectations about what they could get on their money. And that is important because for decades, the people of China have been subsidizing the state banks of China and the state-owned enterprises of China, yep. inefficient operations, inefficient things. When you brought them better yielding uh, money market accounts, you were changing the whole financial services game in the country. And that is radical. Yeah, that's radical. That's dangerous. <laughs> Why is it dangerous? Because um, you know you're taking money from those people take for granted. They just think you know, because a lot of banks, I think they they serve twenty percent of people, but they but they made eighty percent of the profits. Mm. They, you know, China does not have such an efficiency in financial that's su supporting and helping small guys. I heard so many banks talking about supporting small guys, but none of them even really put efforts on that. And they're just talking about, you know, I, I, I talked to some banks. They say, oh, well, you know, I just invested, I just started giving a loan to a small business last, year, last month. I said, how much did you give? He said, 20 million. That's not small business. Mm -hmm. The small business they want to buy five. They want to borrow five thousand dollars. Right. So, what we want to do is want uh, you know, I said five years ago in my speech in China, I said if banks do not change, let's change the banks. Mm. And then they they say no, nah, forget about it. you know you internet, too bad. So we started from Alipay. When you, when we got a. We have uh, more than 300 million active users for Alipay. And we are probably the, sec the third largest payment in the world, you know, after Visa, Mastercard, and Weird. And then so totally changed. All the young people start to using this system. And this system, we are not trying to build up a financial system. We want to build up the credit system for each Chinese individual, each Chinese small business, mm. making sure they have a credit system. With that data and the credit system, we can fundamentally change the China. But isn't, isn't the radical thing, Jack, that you're ending some of the subsidies that have gone to state-owned enterprises for decades? Mm -hmm. And isn't that a threat to the people who work for them, the people who uh, lead them, yeah. the uh, political parties that support them and use them as jobs um, uh, banks, for, for lack of a better word? Yeah, that's why last year I had a tough year. Uh -huh. Well, and you're the richest man in China, so how does that, how does that work? No, I... <laughs> I don't think, well, I have, my wife was very upset last month because newspapers said we are the richest people in China. Mm -hmm. Because I th 15 years ago when I started my business, I asked my wife, do you want your husband to be a rich person or a respected business people? She said, of course, I want you to be respected. <laughs> because she never thought I would be rich, right, I think. Right. That's <laughs> <how>. <laughs> but wait, 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 why was last year a bad year for you? We, we got a little sidetracked there. 
Well, last year, um, because of the Alipay, because of Europe, or because of the money cap mark within, within six months, we uh, gather money more than 100 billion US dollars. <laughs> Come here. That make the government worry, make all the banks hated us. I've never seen fi the, f the top five biggest banks in China unite together, want to kill us, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody criticizes us. Right. Uh, it's a tough year. You have to explain. So how would you uh, characterize your relationship with the government right now? Um, as I always, in love with them, but don't marry them, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk to them, listen to their problem. Government does not need them, you to say, I love you. The government wants to know that you can solve their problems. We created 14 million jobs for China. We are making all the banks to change. So the government finally realized that we are helping them. But it sounds like, at least as it is now, they're willing to tolerate the changes you're bringing to the financial system and the, the overall commercial uh, environment. Yeah, I, I, I went to one on one. I talked to all the chairman of the big banks, you know, sitting down, say, what you are going to do you know, you know, since we're growing. This, the, the one of the guys said, Jack, in 10 years, we will have a fantastic memorial for you. Thank Alibaba and Jack Ma for doing this great thing. But now we have to kill you. Hmm. <laughs> so, it, say, well. so it sounds like there's uh, sort of the movement for change, movement for change uh, economically, socially in China. You recognize that. Young people in particular is what you're focused on. Yeah. When does that become a political issue? So one of the things that you bring up that, about things that need changing in China when does that become a criticism of the current uh, ways that things are being done in a way that threatens people too much? I think we got a support from the normal people, support from the young people, and we are su getting supporting from the government's government reforming side. Mm -hmm. So it's all about a communication. It's all about a sitting there, listen to the others, what's their, what the things they worry about. And um, I get used to it. I've been, I've been criticized for 15 years. People call me crazy guy, and this guy mm -hmm. is doing something. I get used to it. When people start to praise me, people say, wow, you're so great. I cannot get used to that. Hmm. You know, I get used to living a poor life when I have gotten $10 a month, 92 IMB a month as right. a teacher. But now when I have money, I, got, I do not get used to it. You know, right. This is not what I want. So when you want to bring a better life to China, what happens when you see the umbrellas open up in Hong Kong? How does that make you feel? I think that uh, the uh, Hong Kong problem is not about the China and the Hong Kong. It's about the young people. They don't have the hope. Go on. Young people, all the big guys take all the great, uh, you know, real estate guy, big guys, they take all the good things. And the young people, they, they feel hopeless. Fatalistic, no yeah. heroes. Yeah, they, they think, you know, I understand that, but uh, this thing should not push that much. Because when I was young, I was upset by IBM, Microsoft. They take all the great opportunity of me. And I think, how can I be my IBM? How can I be, you know, do things like Cisco? Right. But and as they say, uh, later I say, forget about that. I start to work. I start to focus on myself, my job, and create like. So is it only a matter of time till the umbrellas open up in greater China? I think um, both sides should listen, mm -hmm. and both sides should step down. It's, it's, this thing cannot last long, should not last long. Mm, interesting. OK. Um, what's your view of America from China right now? You love Silicon Valley, but we have our own problems here. Uh, which, which country has no problem? Right. Yeah. Uh, but what's your view of the most acute problems we have right now, the most serious problems in America? Is it lack of political togetherness? What is uh, it? I, I, uh, I have too much problems myself, so I don't <laughs> worry about America. <laughs> but a few years ago, I heard the uh, Americans say, yes, I can, but I did not hear yet how you can. Go on. And. Um, I was a bit upset year 2009 when I came to America. People talking about the financial crisis here and there, everybody's complaining others. Because I remember when I uh, first came to America, when I watched so many movies in America, people say, I have the courage, I want to change myself. It's not waiting for the others. Because if I wait, nobody can help me. I do not have a rich father, I don't have a powerful uncle. And we just had to change ourselves. Right. Do you think Americans have gotten too soft? 
sometimes too hard. Too hard? Oh, you know. How so? You are everywhere. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know, every day I watch the news about America. Mm -hmm. but, but too soft, too hard, well, it's the, uh, my Tai Chi philosophy is soft and hard you have to do together. Right, right. right. Uh, who works harder? Uh, the people at eBay or the people at Alibaba? It's sometimes you have not only have to work, how you have to work smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so would you say you work smarter than I, eBay? I'd have to say yes, right? Well, so far. Yeah, so, so far. far. <laughs> okay. Because I think, you know, um, we are pretty lucky people. And uh, the people say, you, yeah, you work very hard. True, in this world, there's so many people work very hard. But they're not that. I, I told my team when we IPO, I asked a lot of people sitting there, I said, you know, all of you guys, most of the guys are millionaires and so rich. But 15 years ago, who are we? It's so difficult for us to hide people 15 years ago. People who are not that bad. I said, people can walk, still walk on the street, <laughs> we hide them. <laughs> because nobody believes internet, nobody believes internet. And they join the company, those people who believe they're smart, they were headhunted by to the other company. They set up their own company. Those people, no, nobody go to headhunting them. They stay. Today, they be successful. Very key reasons, we insist, we persist. We never mm -hmm. give up. Okay. We believe the dreams together. So uh, let's talk about shopping, because you're about shopping. Would you want to buy eBay? Will you sell it? <laughs> Not mine to sell. But it's splitting up. It's not gonna. It's gonna be worth well, a pittance compared great company. to your. I think yeah. eBay is is a great company. I mean, um, there are a lot of good assets and uh, good customers, and uh, you know, uh, the U.S. people love it. But I, I don't know. I, um, I think it's too early to think about the buy and the sell, merge right. and equate. Whether you know, it's unnecessarily that the good things you all want to put into your own pocket. There are so many things, good things. In the, in the world, you can, because you know, Tim Cook is here, and the Apple is so good, I want to buy Google, but I cannot, I, but I want to buy the Apple, but I cannot. You know? <laughs> I wish Apple is great, you know? You don't have to, oh, this is good, I put it into my pocket. No. Let them be good. Right, let them be good. So you don't want to buy eBay. What about PayPal? They're splitting up. I have my Alipay. Yes, you The don't need still PayPal. question is that they will sell? Uh -huh. No. Because, well. Buying the sell is like a marriage. You want to marry her, she does not marry you, you know? So. I think I understand that. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk about uh, strange marriages. Uh, that gets us to Android, Google, uh, the predominant operating system in the US, or in the world right now on mobile. But you are developing an Alibaba operating system. Tell us about that. Is that a threat to Mr. Cook? Uh, is that a threat to... Um, to Google, what's what's going on? No, I think the uh, Alibaba five years ago, we decided to be a, a, a data company. We want to be the company that share data. So e-commerce, difference between us and Walmart. Walmart is probably, is a company, try to sell more things. But we sell things because we want to collect data. We do financing not because we want to make money from finance. We want to have the data. We believe the data is the most valuable thing assets in the future can serve more small, medium-sized companies. And the difference between us and Google, Google is trying to expand the, the, the bondage of technology. We want to use in technology to expand the bondage of business. And um, Google does not uh, work in pretty well with China government. No. So that makes the Android is like a disabled stuff. Right. And that cannot make in Chinese users using so sort of smoothly. A lot of service Chinese people cannot use. Right. So we need to work on that, making sure our users can use in this on the mobile smoothly, nicely. All right. So we're going to go to questions in just a few minutes. Uh, uh, two more questions for you, or maybe a few more other than that. Um, you spoke to someone very important today an important world leader, Mr. Kobe Bryant. What did Jack Ma and Kobe Bryant uh, have to talk about? We're talking about the muse and inspirations that we learn from our lives. 
Kobe told me that uh, he learned to play basketball by watching National Geography. There's a leopard, you know, the, the tail, you know. It's interesting. I said <laughs> I learned a lot of things from, from movies. Uh -huh. I learned how to make a speech from the movie called um, Bodyguard, Whitney Houston. <laughs> when she sings the songs, I look at her, wow, that's the way that you make a speech, because I never know how to make speech, because I'm not an actor. But when I saw the movie, I say, wow, if you sing from your heart, if you sing naturally, if you are you're yourself, so I, I realized. And I learned a lot from the movies, you know, even learned from the Godfathers. I learned my favorite movie is uh, Forrest Gump, you know. These, uh, these are the things I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Then I would discuss about the, the muse, the inspirations we got from movies. Right, let's talk a little bit more about the muse. Would it make sense for Alipay and Apple Pay to come together? Some rumors, you have a nice smile on your face. Some rumors from our tech reporters in Asia that maybe you, Mr. Cook, have something uh, brewing. <laughs> I'm very interested in that. Okay. But yeah, but uh, as always, you know, um, a good marriage needs both sides of hard working. Uh -huh. And uh, I, uh, I respect Apple and respect him very, very much from my heart. It's, I think he's doing a fantastic job. And I, I, I hope we can do something together. Okay, well, that's very, very interesting. I'd say the predominant theme of our talk has been marriage. <laughs> what have you learned uh, from your wife? about the institution of marriage, and how has that played into your business? I uh, learn a lot from my wife. She's my boss, you know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever boss said is right. Right. But marriage, I think, is a, is a, is a metaphor for you for um, communication, teamwork, and the like. Yeah. It's yeah. trust. Right. It's the trust. It's the believing in the others, and it's about the transparency. Okay. Um, hey, we have an incredible uh, opportunity for you people in the audience participating who are our co-conspirators in this uh, few-day event to ask a question of Jack Ma. So if you do not raise your hand and you have a question on your mind, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> so who's got a question? I think we got one back there, please. If you could identify yourself, stand up, give your question for Jack Ma. Hi, I'm Andrea Chang at the Los Angeles Times. I was wondering if you could be more specific about your strategy in Hollywood this week. Sorry, I didn't expect that. She, she wanted to know your, uh, if you could be more specific about your strategy in Hollywood this week. Um, this, my, is this trip coming here just to want to get the feeling? I watch a lot of movies, but it's not mean I know about no movie industry. One of my friends in the Silicon Valley, and he's, when he became the CEO, I said, you will never be a good CEO. He said, why? He said, I've been working with good CEOs for 15 years. And I said, I watched my mother cook for 30 years. I could not cook. <laughs> <laughs> so I come here to learn. I want to come here looking for partners. And I think China is the, will be the largest movie market in the world. Because next 10, 15 years, China will have more than 200 million middle class people. They need great cultural products. And are they not great now, Jack? No. What's the matter with them? So isolated and uh, self-entertaining. But isn't this the reflection of the restraints put on the art there in yeah, China? Yeah, now we are at the internet time. So I think using internet. So does that subvert some of the restrictions placed by the government on films? Yeah, yeah. you know, never, never worry too much about the government because people, when I started business 15 years ago, internet, Everybody is telling me, oh, China government is censorship by internet, this censorship by internet, that. I say, well, you know, let's look at the good side. Mm -hmm. And movie, the same thing. What I want to do movie, I, mean, I never expect Ali Pictures will be successful in 12 months. I'm thinking about uh, how we can make Ali movie works and successfully in 10 years. Because one of the key res things that we succeed is because we we see problem in 10 years, and we start to do now, and persist, and do in the right way, and then we'll win. If, so we, if we want to win tomorrow, now we've got a chance. Well, the, predominantly, the pr predominant way in which these films will be viewed then will not be in theaters, it will be on devices or? Yeah, mobile, uh, and I you don't know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the pad, and all the things. Interesting, okay, other questions for, for Jack Ma, please. 
If you could get a, a microphone, please. So cold here. Okay, thank you. Do you need a hug? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you've, you've been a teacher uh, before you started Alibaba. What can Alibaba do to change education in China? And Gregor Freund, Russell. I think um, we are we are going to do a lot on that because I I was trained to be a teacher and I taught six years and I feel regret that uh, I give up my teaching and I'm going to do something but teaching is more political and uh, I right now I call myself CEO Chief Education Officer of my company. And I think the best product of Alibaba is not Alibaba.com, it's not the Taobao.com, it's not Alipay.com. It's 25,000 employees I have because in five, 10 years, I'll kick all of them out to be the CEO, be the teacher, do whatever they want to do. And uh, we're going to put a lot of resources on education. And uh, I learned so much from being a teacher. A teacher, they always hope that your students are better than you are. And as me, a job. Why I become a CEO? Why people still believe in me and trust me in my company? Because I want my people better than I am. And I think China education system has huge potential. And today I use internet as the best university for China. Hmm. It, it sounds like you have a, um People in, in the U.S. and the West, uh, I think there's a, there's a uh, layer of fear about China, about what it represents, change, and uh, he, here. But it sounds like you have, um, I wouldn't say a pessimistic view, but uh, a very stark view of some of the problems in China right now, right? Education and the environment and the like. No, I'm a very optimistic, actually. I see so many problems, and that is the problem for companies like us. If we can do the environment, we can do culture, education. I think nobody believed that Alibaba would be this size T 15 years ago, 10 years ago, maybe five years ago. But we made it happen. We believed 15 years ago. I believe today that China in 10 years, China will have a blue sky if we start to do now. Hmm. But if you pessimists, ah, you never do. Because I think, I don't know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, LA, Los Angeles have the same problem like China for the air. We've started to do it. So I, I'm pretty lucky because I always believe the opportunity is the place, uh, uh, lies in the place where the complaints are. And I, I'm strong believe that. Okay, that's really interesting. Other questions? Please, sir. Hi, Jeff. Yep. You, you mentioned about mental health and healthcare. Could you elaborate on that? What kind of service you plan to provide uh, in, in those sectors? The health, I think today, solving the problem of a physical health problem, we want to try to build more hospitals, have more doctors, and have more <coughs> medicine factories. But I believe if we can use data technology, which I said the world is moving from IT technology to data technology, which is called IT to DT. Data technology is trying to make other people happier, make other people better, and is trying to make transparent. And I think if we do properly, China in 10 years should have less hospitals, less chemical products, less doctors. So we are using data to change that. For health, the mental health, I want to learn from Hollywood using the Hollywood technology and China <laughs> philosophy. All right, I don't know if Hollywood is the place for mental health, but <laughs> you'll, you well, will find out uh, tomorrow. Well, <laughs> if people see different eyes, something, something that, because like a lot of my young, young people in China, they always complain about China. And people outside China say, wow, this is, sounds very interesting in America. You have a lot of great things, but you get used to it. You think, well, you know, that's, but to me, wow, that's <laughs> interesting. You know, let's see. Because I see a lot of opportunities here. I oh. do. Mm -hmm. I we feel excited about it. We're out of time, but give us one or two opportunities in the U.S. that you feel excited about. 
I don't want to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, I think, you know, the great opportunities for e-commerce here is great. Hmm. Bigger this, than already there. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, Amazon, eBay, well, you need a mall. We need more. So you're coming. So go to 11main.com. I'm helping more. I'm helping more. Yeah. yeah, you'll go to 11main.com. That's just the start. It's yeah. just the start. It's just the start. Okay, well, Jack Ma, it's been a very brief marriage on stage with you, 30 minutes, <laughs> but it's been a wonderful uh, honeymoon. So thank you so much. Please join me in thanking Jack Ma. Thank you very much. <laughs>